Gospel on November 18, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, a nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, engage in trade with this until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, we do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called, the one he had given the money, to whom he had given the money, to, to, earn what they had gained, to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. She replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant, too, he said, You, take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, By your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down, and harvesting what I did not plant? Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him, and give it to the servant who has ten. But they say to him, Sir, he has ten gold, ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has more will be given, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded to his journey to up to Jerusalem. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You have a very complex and deep passage of the gospel today. Let us get into it immediately. The first, the first thing that I would like to point out to you is that the Lord is speaking. He is prophesying. prophesying. He is explaining to us what is going to happen. I am sure that the apostles back at the time and none of the other people really understood what he was talking about. And he said that because the people thought, all of them thought, the kingdom of God would appear immediately as soon as he entered after the Sunday of Palm. After acclaiming the king, the, king, the kingdom would appear. And that was not the case because the kingdom of God has to be done one by one heart by heart, you and me and all the children of God has to be transformed and then transform our reality, this world, into the kingdom of God. So he's telling them, it's not going to happen like that. This one is not going to be given to you for free. You have to work it. You have to obtain it in order for you to share it. Then he explains, a nobleman went off to obtain the kingship to a distant country. And then he called ten of his slaves. We don't like the word slave. It has many, oh, many resonances nowadays all over the world. But that is the word that was used, not servant, slaves. And back then, when you owned a slave, you owned him. You didn't pay him anything, you just sustained him because he was your property. But he was obliged to work for you his entire life. And so he called ten of his, of his slaves, and to each of them he gave them one gold coin, a very valuable thing, and told them, engage in trade until I return. Make them work. Now, when he came back, he immediately called those. 
what is it? What what is happening? How do I explain that? Or how I will try to explain it? It is not that God, that Jesus Christ is not king of us right now. But he went to receive his kingship on the cross by his passion and resurrection. And then he went off. He was received on the bosom of the Holy Trinity. There dwells seated at the right hand of the Father, one human being with flesh and bones who was born out of the Virgin Mary and who happens to be also the eternal Logos, the eternal Son of God incarnated. We are waiting for His second coming. What does it have to do with you and me? This, thing's about, this thing about the coins. Well, that is the image of you and me and everyone else. We are the servants, we are the slaves, the property of God. He has created the whole universe. He has given your life and mine, given us the intelligence, the opportunities, the family, our bodies, everything that we have and that we could dream to have. Everything is provided by God. And we have to remember what happened to our first fathers, Adam and Eve. How God, after creating everything, the whole universe, told them, I give you the land, plant it, harvest it, make it produce. And it's the same. We are called upon to build that kingdom one by one, starting within ourselves, within our heart. And when I say the kingdom of God is within our heart, I am not saying that, I am not implying just solely or, or basically that muscle pump that is pumping blood all around us. When I'm in the Semitic thought, heart means the base of the conscience, where your inner self is, but not only that, also your feelings, your thoughts, your mind, and your whole body, everything, the whole person that is you, is the heart, is what is conceived as heart. So when God starts reigning there in your heart, then you start changing the way you live, and then you start building, being a stone of that new Jerusalem, of that kingdom of God. We see a, a contrast. The first one, a good servant. Serge Gold coin has earned 10 additional ones. Well done, good servant. And then the other, the contrast. Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored in a handkerchief. I was afraid of you. You are a demanding man. You take what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He's accusing him of being almost a robber. And he forgets that he himself and the coin belonged to that man, that he was obliged to work to that man, for that man. Unfortunately, our translation does not come with a question, because the Lord is asking him, you knew that I was a demanding man? you knew that I take up what I did not lay down? That I harvest what I did not plant? Of course, that is all lies. But yet, he says, why did you not put my money in a bank if you didn't want to work? Take the coin away from him. Give it to the servant who has ten. And then he says, everyone who has will be given more. We have to have. We absolutely have to work. We have to realize that with everything that we have been given so far, there is a huge compromise. There is a huge need for us to work, to develop, to build the Kingdom of God. There is no way around it. Happy we will be if our God finds us working hard on that. And even if you are in the bed where you will not rise up again because you are ill, and terminally ill, offer that, even if it's your last breath, Offer that so that you might not go into the presence of God with empty hands. Your brothers, until we meet in heaven, God bless you all.